This video will describe how to use Onset's Barometric Compensation Data Assistant software tool with the Hoboware Pro software. The Barometric Compensation Assistant allows you to take uh, raw pressure data from your U20 or U20L water level logger, combine that with uh, a barometric pressure measurement, either a single point or uh, a data file, in a reference measurement and, and uh, calculate uh, water level or sensor depth from that and it creates a new series in your data. So what I want to do is I want to run through this. I have some sample data so I want to um, let's open that first raw the pressure file so we're going to click on open data file and I have this was deployed in a stream so we can see Here's an, we're in our plot setup screen. The logger was set to record absolute pressure in the water, uh, temperature. It also was logging the battery level. I'm going to turn that off. I'm, I don't really care about that at this point. I'm also going to deselect all the internal events. Again, there's a, prior, uh, a preference in Hoboware that allows you to not show those or not include those in your plot. Notice down in our data assistance, Hoboware sees that we're measuring temperature and absolute pressure. So it makes both the barometric compensation assistant available and the growing degree days assistant available. Uh, we're, gonna, we're going to use the barometric compensation assistant to post-process that data. So we click on process and we get our barometric compensation assistant up here. The top of the screen gives us the ability to select a fluid density um, you can, and again, here are the different density values in pounds per cubic feet for each type of density, fresh, salt, brackish. If you have the ability, if you took a manual measurement with some kind of, with an instrument that measures fluid density, you can put that in there. Or you can select uh, derived from the temperature channel. Again, that's usually for fresh, it's used for fresh water. So this is a freshwater deployment, so that's the one I'm going to select. Uh, from fluid density, we see we have a place to put in a reference water level. Uh, the reference water level is a, a mechanical measurement that you make sometime during your deployment after the logger has stabilized to temperature. It's very important that you take your reference water level measurement at a time when the logger has been in the water for a while, typically at least 10 minutes, so that it has stabilized uh, the temperature and that it is recording uh, at that time. So we click on use a reference water level. And what we did is uh, when you're in the field, when you take that reference water level measurement, you would write that down in your ledger or in your log book when you're out there you want to write down what that water level was what it was taken to what what uh, what reference you're using what the value was and what the current time and date was so ours was we did it at 835 on the 8th of December so we're associating it this is from this drop down we see all of our data points from our data logger and so we're going to go to uh, on the 8th of December we're going to go to 837 because that's the closest data point that we have to our 835 logbook entry and again we're going to talk about how to uh, let me show you what we mean by reference water level and how to measure those um, how to enter that water level based on how you measured your your reference water level a note on uh, measuring reference water levels. Um, basically, this image you can see that um, if you if you are referencing uh, a point uh, below the water level surface, in other words, if the water level surface is above the reference water level or reference point, the reference water level you enter that as a positive number in your data assistant. If the water level surface is below the reference point, like here we see we're referencing the top of a well, 
the reference water level, you enter it in your data assistant as a negative number. The other option is if, if you only care about the depth of the sensor, uh, and again, we'll call it sensor depth by default in once you do it this way, but basically you can enter a reference water level as zero and start the logger before it goes in the water. And then your logged water level readings will represent the height of the water above the sensor or the sensor depth. One other point too is if you do not use a, a reference water level, um, basically your resulting series data will contain values for absolute sensor depth just like this. When you do use a reference water level, the resulting data will contain water level values relative to that measured reference level. Moving down through the assistant, the next portion is where we can use, select to either use a barometric data file or a constant barometric pressure to compensate for changes in barometric pressure during the deployment. This is important to get the best accuracy because this is a non-vented logger, so we need to compensate for those changes. Use of a reference water level and use of a constant barometric pressure or single point barometric pressure value are mutually exclusive. So you can see we have a checkbox in use reference water level. So we cannot select to use a constant barometric pressure. So we would have to uncheck that. And now we can use that single point barometric pressure if we want to. And again, either PSI or KPA. We are going to use a reference water level for this exercise. We're also going to use a barometric data file. We have a data file, and again, we click on use it, and then we have to click on choose, and we can navigate to where our barometric data file is. We happen to have one here. This was a another U20 logger that was deployed out of the water during the, that deployment period. You can also use third-party barometric data. It has to be formatted so that it can be imported into Hoboware. There's information in the Hoboware manual or the user's guide, Hoboware Pro, how to format text data so that you can import it. Keep in mind that some weather stations correct their barometric pressure measurements to sea level. So if you're not at sea level, that may not be the most accurate source for barometric data. So we're going to select the barometric pressure.hobo file, click on open. And again, now we have this associated with this. Note that my resultant series name is water level because we're using the reference water level and because it's not zero. If it was set to zero or if we weren't using one, it would be, uh, the resultant series name would be default to, ser to sensor depth. We can change that if we want to, but basically that just reminds you that we are using a, a reference water level, so this is indeed water level. Cre click on create new series, and what you'll see now is we'll see here's our in situ or in the water pressure, our temperature from that logger, and then we have our absolute pressure, uh, barometric pressure from that other logger, and our resultant series, which is water level. We click on plot, and there's our data. And again, we can see some interesting we did record some data when it was out of the water. The way we know that is because if we look at our temperature right here, we have a significant drop in temperature when it was dropped into the water and a corresponding increase in water level right there. So that, that's when it was dropped into the water. Once you have it plotted to your satisfaction, you can save this file as a hobo project file, which will retain all your um, compensated data file and save project and it saves it as an HPROJ extension file. Also keep in mind that project files do not have the information available to run data assistance so you have to do this before you merge any files together. You can only run data assistance on raw.hobo files or .dtf files. If we want to see uh, if someone gives us a, a project file or something and we want to see what parameters were used to determine water level, yeah, over here in the left margin, we see the details pane. If we click on the little plus sign, 
we will see a selection that says bar barometric compensation parameters. Click on the little plus sign, and now we can see what fluid density was used, what reference water level was used, uh, the time that it was associated to the to the data file, and uh, where the barometric pressure data file uh, was located.